Hey y'all, I'm Crystal and welcome back to My Texas Garden. Today, we're going to talk about your seasonal fall allergies and what may actually be the real culprit. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. And if you're all about gardening naturally, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to smash the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. This plant right here is called goldenrod and it's definitely not the cause of your seasonal allergies. The cause of your seasonal allergies is da, 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 the ragweed. Now most people associate their fall allergies with the goldenrod because you can see it in all of the fields. Ragweed hides amongst the goldenrod. It makes it really hard to tell the difference between the two when it's all kind of growing in the same field. Now ragweed is green. It could grow about six foot tall and its flower stalk is also green. Now the reason why so many of us suffer from fall allergies is because ragweed pollen from the green flowers is extremely lightweight and once the wind picks it up it can travel hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles now goldenrod pollen is total opposite it's actually very very heavy and does not travel in the wind at all the pollen is perfect for our pollinating friends to move around from goldenrod to goldenrod now our pollinating friends love goldenrod so much, there is over a hundred different varieties of goldenrod. Now goldenrod is a member of the aster family and it has been used for centuries for medicinal reasons. Now I am not an expert forager and I encourage you to go out and learn more about this wonderful medicinal plant and how to identify it uh, for yourself. Now when I'm foraging for it, what I look for is I look for kind of a cone shape flower head. Now I did say that this is in the aster family and when you look at it, this flower head is actually made up of lots and lots and lots of little teeny tiny flowers. Its leaves are actually elongated like this and some of them have a sawtooth pattern on the edge of the leaf. Now, like I said, there are over a hundred different varieties of goldenrod. So I encourage you to learn about the variety in your area. Now, this entire plant, from my understanding, right down to the roots, is edible. And in Chinese medicine, the roots are actually used as an herbal remedy, where I use the leaves and the flower buds. Now goldenrod is a perennial and it will spread in an area. Um, I guess you could say it's invasive. I don't see it that way because of its medicinal uses, which we'll cover in a second, uh, but it spreads via rhizomes under the ground. Now goldenrod grows all year long and it's present even when you don't notice it. I typically don't notice it until the fall when the flowers actually blossom. And for me, whenever I see goldenrods blossom in my field, I know that winter is right around the corner. And y'all, I'm gonna be very honest here. We had such a hot and dry summer. I thought fall, winter would never get here. The goldenrod has actually only been open a couple of weeks now. Where other parts of the country, their goldenrod has been in bloom for over a month, which led me to believe that winter was just gonna skip on by this year. <laughs> now in the beginning of this video, I mentioned fall allergies and the likely culprit is ragweed. However, one of the medicinal uses for this plant is combating seasonal allergies. Yes, the cure grows right next to the cause. 
Isn't nature grand? Now let's talk about its medicinal properties. It's known for its anti-inflammatory properties. It's also very good for your urinary tract uh, system and getting rid of kidney stones. Goldenrod is actually thought to help with your entire respiratory system. It's also known for its antifungal properties, which can help rid the body of yeast overgrowth. Because of its anti-inflammatory properties, it has been thought to help regulate your blood pressure, as well as helping with skin conditions like psoriasis. Now, if you're planning on foraging for goldenrod, rule one, if you're not foraging on your own property, make sure the property owner gives you their full 100% approval to forage on their property. Rule two, never over forage an area. Goldenrod is the bee's last hurrah before winter and they really do rely on this for that last bit of food before it gets too cold for them. So make sure you never take more than half of an area's goldenrod or anything you're foraging really. Golden rule, goldenrod. Now when I'm cutting goldenrod, I never take more than half of the plant. Now these plants can grow six feet tall and by never taking more than half of the plant, I am ensuring that the little rhizomes can grow and produce more goldenrod. Remember I said it was kind of invasive, but not in my opinion because it's got such great medicinal uses? Yeah, we don't want those to run out. You can drink it in a tea or you can take it via tincture form, not to mention these make gorgeous, gorgeous bouquets. Look at this. A very, very simple bouquet for your Thanksgiving table. Is that not gorgeous or what? Oh, they smell so good. Right now my fields smell like honey. I'm smelling honey everywhere. And this is the reason why they have such a nice, light, honey smell. They're amazing. Now that I got a pretty decent harvest, it's time to dry it out. Now, if I was making a tincture from them, I could immediately uh, take the blossoms, chop them up, and stick them into alcohol. And that would create our tincture. However, I have greater plans for these goldenrod. I mentioned before that it was good for skin issues like psoriasis. So I wanna make a goldenrod oil out of some of these so that I can use them in lotions and in soap. And because I wanna use them in oil, it's very important to remove a lot of the moisture from the flowers and from the leaves. Now I could go about and strip all of the leaves down and put them in the dehydrator and dry them out. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just going to put them in bundles like this and hang them up in the house and let them dry. Now once this dries out, I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you exactly all of the ways I'm gonna prepare this for its medicinal uses. To see more great gardening videos just like this one, go ahead and click right here and I'll meet y'all over there.